Welcome back to my darkroom. Today we are going to be looking at Kodak Print Developer Formula D155. D155 is described in the darkroom cookbook as a brown black to red brown print developer. So we're going to look and see if that holds true with modern papers. Now bear in mind I'm using Ilford Classic and Ilford Multigrade warm tone papers and these may not show the full range of colors that the developer is able to get. So if you're using something different like FOMA you might get different results but you'll have to test that yourself. Now the formula for D155 is very similar to ANSCO 130. That is we're going to have metal, sodium sulfite, hydroquinone, sodium carbonate, potassium bromide, and glycin. So the exact same ingredient list. However, you'll see that we're going to be using a lot less of it in this developer. So we're going to see what that looks like and we might even compare the prints here to ANSCO 130, but we're definitely going to be comparing to Dectol just like we do all the other print developers because Dectol is just a nice vanilla developer. Now before we get to looking at the prints and the formulas, if you would like to help support this channel, you can go to my Patreon page right up there, or you can get t-shirts such as this Edward Weston shirt or lab towels or other things from the links down in the description. Everything there goes to improving this channel and buying supplies to make these videos. Start with 750 milliliters of hot water. That's 125 degrees Fahrenheit or 52 degrees Celsius. Add 0 0.4 grams of metal, 22 grams sodium sulfite, 4 grams hydroquinone, 21 grams sodium carbonate monohydrate, 4 grams potassium bromide, 2.6 grams glycin, once fully dissolved, top off with water to one liter. Here we have our Ilford Classic in Dectol 1 to 2 and our Kodak D155. All right, obviously we have a contrast difference. We can definitely see that here and we can see it in this area, just lower contrast overall. I would say probably a whole solid filter or grade. Uh, the formula here is pretty much identical to the uh, ANSCO 130, but the ratios are much lower, which means we're basically getting a more dilute version of ANSCO 130. And I think that's just causing lower contrast because we have less active ingredient. However, when it comes to print color, the Ilford Classic shows virtually no change whatsoever, and that's pretty common with Ilford Classic. It does not want to change color at all. Even when we did the extremely warm 165 uh, or 166, whatever that was a few videos ago, there was not a lot of color change in the Ilford Classic. Uh, let's take a look at the warm tone and see if there's much of a change there. Here, not much. Definitely a lower contrast, but we can of course control that with our filtration. We can make these match. Uh, when it comes to color, well, not much going on. Uh, I just don't see any color change in real life. So, okay, let's look at the warm tone. So here we have the warm tone. Again, clearly a lower contrast happening here. Uh, when it comes to color, it it really doesn't look any different. It's got that classic slightly greenish warm tone that Ilford warm tone displays in just about everything. It can be a little deceiving. I think this looks a touch warmer mostly because it's more of the mid-tones, whereas this has a little bit more shadow tone to it. Like it, the green looks a little more pronounced on my monitor, but when I'm looking at the actual prints, they look exactly the same. Uh, if I look 
really kind of in these areas here uh, and up here on the tree trunk. Those tones are identical uh, in the lighter tones and they just look exactly the same. When it comes to areas like through here, I think it's deceiving because it's just lighter than this. And the darker, of course, is going to tend towards a little bit more black. But this tone and this tone are about the same. Maybe it's a touch warmer. I mean, it's certainly not going to be described as brown, black, or red, black, or anything like that. It's maybe just a little bit warmer, but quite frankly, I'm not sure if I'm just trying to convince myself or if I actually see something. So other than contrast, I'm not really seeing any color difference at all. So is it worth mixing this up versus something else? Not really. At this point, uh, at this point, I think I would just mix up some deck tall, and if I wanted lower contrast, I'd just lower the grade and then do my color change in toning because I'm not getting much of a warm tone. Now, the other warm tone, the extreme warm tone that we did before, the, the um, D166 formula, okay, that was a warm tone developer. This, on the other hand, no, nah, it's all right. Uh, lower contrast, sure. Warmer, mm, not so much. And there you have it. So you can see because the ingredients are lower in this formula versus ANSCO 130, we're getting pretty much the same results in terms of color, but we're getting lower contrast. Now that can be explained because if you look at the instructions for ANSCO 130, you'll see that it says dilute higher for lower contrast. And that's basically what we did. So whereas ANSCO 130 is at a one-to-one -one dilution, and this is one-to-one -one dilution, we're getting eh, something like a one-to-three or one-to-four equivalent of ANSCO 130. That means lower contrast, but because we have the same active ingredients, metal, hydroquinone, and glycine, we're getting the same range of tonality and color for the print. So, you can almost make these look the same if you adjusted the dilutions. And I find that it did not soften the gelatin like D166 did a few months ago that caused the emulsion to start peeling off the paper. That had such high concentrations of our restrainer that I feel like we were getting excessively long developing times and very soft gelatin. In this case, we're not getting that. We're getting nice, stable developer. So if you're looking for that, there you go. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.